Good morning, everyone. Uh, I, I'm Brad Wheeler from Indiana University and also chair of the board of the Kuali Foundation. Probably about five or six years ago, I don't know, it's been a long time, we'll say five, I started doing a Kuali 101 session for how Kuali works, uh, you know, because as we were growing in projects, so uh, we teed this up to uh, do it again this year, but I think we have a lot of new information to share this year. I, I think we'll have some time for questions, so I encourage you, if you would have some questions or something that you want to know, to please be ready with those. I'll take questions as we go, if there's one that comes up, or we can have more questions at the end. So here we go. When I talk to a lot of leaders of, at colleges and universities, people who are in charge of various areas, whether it's a HR or research administration or provost and, and others, this really is kind of the bottom line for questions about this. Where does the money come from? Where does the money, where do the dollars go? What do we get for them and when do we get it? That's really cutting to the chase in the bottom line. So we'll try to walk through those uh, as we uh, cover this topic. Uh, to begin with, we found it increasingly necessary to uh, explain a little bit about what Kuali is not. So I had a conversation not long ago with an executive who really, this was the mental model uh, in her mind that there was this big blob in the middle of this thing called the uh, Kuali Foundation that made product decisions and had some advisory boards and roles and such, but the foundation, if we decided one year that, you know, we've really got to get that library project done, so we're going to not do anything for KFS this year and divert the money into the library or something else. And those of you who've been around from Kuali uh, and the way we were organized, you should be rolling in laughter uh, at hearing that right now. But the view was that there is a foundation and it spit out projects and there's an open license and commercial affiliates and that's kind of how it all worked. And you know it's not like that at all. It looks something more like this. Kuali is a federation of projects. We began with the financial system and before the financial system had ever really spit out a line of code that was usable, uh, Bruce can correct me, is it four or five of our original investors in KFS became investors in a research administration system, five, thank you, right out of the, the gate. And so there was the financial project and then there was the Kuali Coeus project. And I do recall those conversations as Steve Dowdy referred to it. The research administration people, they were very cautious about getting involved with this Kuali thing because they didn't want those darn CFOs to run off with their money for the research system. And so the Kuali Foundation said, no, we'll manage this as fund-based accounting. So each project essentially has its own fund and, and carries out its own business. The foundation provides some shared services of managing the copyright and managing financials and audited financials and paying the bills and signing contracts and things such as that. Um, a little known factoid, uh, over the number of years, I think Jennifer did a, a look, we, these projects have executed over $15 million of commercial contracts that these boards have chosen to contract with commercial entities to do certain things. The outcomes were always open source, documentation open, and then we had uh, commercial affiliates who provided some support. And projects came about this way. The foundation doesn't say, we think there should be a library project, or we think there should be uh, an HR project of some sort. We are approached by member universities who say, we would like to do a certain thing, and here's two or three other universities, and we're going to create a project with a charter. So you can start there at the top. Partners join and provide staff and cash, and there's an agreement to create a project. And that starts, and then in the end, down at the bottom, you see some software comes out, then that software is licensed out free to the world, and then that line across the middle, most of the institutions that were early investors in, in projects to get them out the door, they implement them, and then they want to continue to be a part of maintaining them. And this is how Kuali has been running over time. We sometimes represent it this way. 
that each project has its own set of services, a project board, a functional council, project management, and such. And then there's rice there for some shared services. And at the bottom, there's the Kuali Foundation. Now, this is very intentionally drawn this way. It's not that the foundation is a top-level entity that we run lines of business by authority like a typical corporation would and down. It's organized in this way. So what has occurred in that organization over some number of years? Well, we've built a lot of enterprise-class software that does what it's supposed to do and is meeting the needs of higher education. KFS being the granddaddy, the old project at this time, uh, 25 KFS implementations, some using it software as a service. We've documented that our institutions have achieved many of their goals in saving some money relative to other choices. We've demonstrated that the software can be sustained beyond its initial creation, but we've also learned there are some challenges along the way. So for example, the KFS original investors chose not to build extensive reporting and business intelligence in KFS itself because many of those universities, they already had invested in Cognos or some other reporting tool and they wanted to continue use of that. Okay, so you implement KFS and you use whichever reporting tools that you would like to do. But in the marketplace, when some play, uh, institutions look at KFS, they say, we'd really like to have the reporting stuff all bundled with it. And so you think about that as a bit of a challenge because the features that are in KFS today are the features that are paid for and valued by the universities who created it or the universities who've paid in as sustaining members. So we know we've achieved some things and we know we've had challenges in other areas. This next chart's a little bit busy, but I want you to take a moment and get your head around it. What has happened over time because of this very federated approach that the librarians run their project and that Kuali Coeus runs its project, is we've created many software companies. So if you look at the roles down the left-hand side, is there a software as a service offering? Who's going to respond to RFPs? Where do decisions ultimately get made? Who articulates what the system should do, functional requirements? Who manages and coordinates all those people for project management? Where the engineers and programmers come from? Quality assurance, who makes sure the darn thing does what it's supposed to do? What about the user experience? What about the plumbing and architecture below? So KFS started out in, uh, as the first project and it had to do all of those roles. And you'll notice that uh, partner boards were established and uh, project management sometimes was university staff, sometimes it was contracted to someone. Programmers mostly came from our institutions. But like, look over at open, uh, the uh, open library environment, Olay. You see the column there, the, the blue column at the top. Notice for programmers, Olay mostly contracted that out. But what we had is a situation where each project was literally managing a full vertical of a software company, including engineers who may come and go with job opportunities, lots of work on UX at one point and then not so much at another point. And most of these project boards actually had a day job too, running the university in, in some way. So you can imagine what happens when we comes along and there's mobile devices. And now all of the products need to be upgraded to interact with the ever-changing pace of mobile devices. Or how do we deal with coordinating Rice needs to go forward, but Olay is not ready for it, but KFS is waiting for it. How do we coordinate that? So we, what got you here, I guess to quote another good book, of what got you here won't get you there. And that's where we really are at as a software community. We've learned to do these things and, and make these products work, but we need to go faster. And that's one of the things you heard this morning. So as we turn to Kuali's second decade, uh, we did the community workshops that some of you probably attended, 100 members of the community. We hammered on Google Docs so everybody could talk at the same time. It was a little crazy to watch, but it actually 
did work. Everybody got to speak, and then people went and put asterisks on ideas that they thought were the good ones, and there were the questions. Okay, what are we doing well as a community? Where do we need to get better? Having some challenges. How's the world changing? I think we all know. Mobile devices, many institutions are very interested now in not running software on-premise. They would like to run it just as a subscription through the cloud. Uh, many of our institutions are connected to Internet 2, the fastest network across the nation with 100 gig connections amongst uh, many of the state networks and all. So it makes a little sense that that data center might be somewhere else uh, on a long extension cord. And what are some of the options to do it? And the four S's that you've heard. We need speed. We need a full suite. Some institutions say, Unless you guys find a way to have a full HR system, our institution's not going to go there. How do we build out a suite? We want to know that it's sustainable, and it ought to be awesome software. It ought to be a delightful user experience. So as we began this change, I will refer you back to a blog post that I did on August 27th that says, the more things change, the more they look the same with additions. If you go out to blog.kowali.org, it enumerates a number of things about this community that continue and are going to continue, and it enumerates a number of things that with Kowali Co. we're going to be able to do in addition to that. So now, let's review those roles again. I won't say that this is a perfect list, but could you agree that to make and build and sustain software over time, you need pretty much all this stuff done? It needs to get done. Right now, the Quali Foundation, if we get an RFP from a university that says, hey, here is our bid document. Can you spend about five days filling out these 37 pages of micro questions uh, in order to bid for uh, being the system at our university? Our response is, we don't do that. <clears throat> Foundation doesn't do that. We're not staffed to do it. Um, we do remind people we generally are the price leader on the licensing cost of any implementation that somebody wants to do. But that's work that does need to get done. So when you think about the traditional software model that many of us are familiar with, on one side we see colleges and universities. These institutions, we need great software. We've got ideas about how it ought to be. We may even have requirements that in the state of California, you have to do financial reporting in a certain way, and it's not even a prerogative. For legal compliance, you have to do it that way, or federal compliance and quality coeus and such. We know this stuff isn't all free to implement it, to run it, to roll it out, to support it. It costs money, and we're willing to pay for it. We, we know that. And we have some imperatives. We want our problem solved, and we want to keep our money and our mission. We want money to go into scholarships and research labs and those things. So on the other side of the equation, there are investors in firms. My pension fund is invested in many of those firms, and I like the returns that show up uh, in some of those investments. Investors are willing to give up their dollars, they'll put them at risk, but they would like a big return. They don't care if they're buying General Motors stock that's on a, buying on a dip, if it's the funeral home business, as we saw the casket companies on display uh, one floor below us, if it's a software company that sells to universities, couldn't care less for many investors. They just want a return. And that's what makes our great economy work. And you, so the, the goal is maximize profit over time. So the way that evolves, when you think of all of those roles that need to get done, the match has been that looks something like this. The firm takes on doing all of those roles, it puts its capital at risk, and then it charges a metered license for us to get access to that software. In many cases, this has worked well for us over a number of years. But the real problem is at the bottom. Our imperative of universities is we want our problems solved, we want great software, and we want to minimize the money leaving our institutions. These firms rightfully pursue, they want to maximize their profit over time. So they would rather pay a dividend than invest more money in software that frankly 
your switching costs are so high, you can't not pay maintenance next year. So when that choice comes, is it this or this, that's what we see a lot. So Kuali, we stepped in and said, well, if we think of all of those roles, uh, what we're going to do is with the Kuali Foundation and Kuali Projects, we're going to take those responsibilities to our side of the table. Uh, we'll do those, and we didn't do marketing and RFPs, but we had the commercial affiliates, uh, the KCAs out there, Kuali Commercial Affiliates. They're members of the community. They also do some work outside of the community with, again, rightfully, a, a profit imperative. And this is the way we've been running for the last year. Now, remember, uh, we have a bit of a cumulative experience with that, and it looks like this. This is the one I showed you just a moment ago that we have boards running many software companies where it is difficult sometimes to hire. The, in a hot IT labor market, it's hard to hire and retain the best software engineers, the best user experience designers, and we've got some really outstanding people in our universities who've done a lot of this, but as Joel noted earlier this morning, in many cases, they're really gummed up by all of our coordination and decision processes uh, across here that have slowed us down. So in a very imperfect diagram, and I'll ask you not to draw every conclusion in the world from it, how do we represent how Kuali works in the next phase? And that is a blended software model. So again, on the left, you see colleges and universities, they need great software, they're willing to pay for some services, going to continue to do some coding locally. And then on the right side, you see Kualico and some things that it can do in aggregate scale around it. So as you heard Lynn Johnson, the chair of the Kuali Financial System Board this morning, as you heard her say, the KFS Project Board, there's 11 sustaining uh, institutions in there, voted unanimously, looking at a proposal, for a comprehensive engagement of KFS with Kualico. So some of those responsibilities really swing to the Kualico side. Now there is someone to respond to RFPs and to market and say, you know what, this is the best freaking financial system in the world for higher education. It is of, by, and for higher ed, and it fits. And if you want it, software as a service, it's out there and available, and the user experience is going to mature very quickly for it. There's some parts of those decisions of input rights and decision rights that will remain hybrid. The company, Kualico, will be hearing from a whole set of new adopters of KFS who may say, you know what, for smaller institutions, here's five things that would make it simpler and better and easier, and Kualico may fund the development of those things happening. The 11 sustaining investors for uh, project partners for uh, KFS, they've got a wish list that they've been accumulating. Here's 27 things that we need done with KFS for uh, our institutions. And so that's why you see expression of functional requirements, uh, some work with quality assurance, spanning between institutions and Qualico. Now note the foundation continues to play a very important convening and aggregating role. If Indiana University, on our own, engaged with Kualico, and we really wanted to have influence, we would be one voice amongst many. But KFS, we aggregate a community there that knows each other, trusts each other, learns from each other, supports each other, and we're saying collectively, here is a pool of resources, here is a list of things that we need to get done. We've got some expertise in our community. Kualico has some expertise that it's hiring as it's building out its staffing. And as Lynn Johnson described, it literally is a hybrid organization between what KFS can do well and has proven it can do well and moving some responsibilities to Kualico's side because it's going to demonstrate in very short order that it can do those things well. So where are we at today? And I, I put a date at the top of this because I may need to update it tomorrow. Uh, today, a quality student has rechartered a student project that is cloud scale from the beginning. The University of Maryland has already signed on to that as an executed deal. The coding and the work have begun. 
I believe you will see additional universities making some announcements about that in the not too distant future. Cloud-based curriculum management will be available by summer if I have that date right. Now remember, when I say cloud-based, what I'm saying is you can subscribe to it in software as a service if you wish to run it that way. If you wish to take the code, download it, host it locally, stand it up and run it, you can continue to do that as well. So I'm saying cloud in an additive sense, not in a substitutive sense. Uh, Quali Ready, for many of you, if you know that's our business continuity planning tool, we already have about 100 subscribers to Quali Ready. Uh, it needed a facelift, it needed some work done, and that is underway, and I think uh, that's targeted for about second quarter, Jennifer, is that right, do you know? First of the year, they're writing faster than I anticipated. So uh, the new Quali Ready will be out, and this is your boards of trustees and regents get increasingly serious about enterprise risk mitigation, ERM. Kowali Ready is amongst your very core essential tools to have your institution really thought out of how would you handle major power outages? How would you handle a tornado ripping through? How would you do all sorts of continuity in disaster recovery uh, planning? Uh, you heard Lynn say yesterday the financial uh, group has already voted to move to comprehensive, um, uh, uh, comprehensive engagement with Kowalico, and other groups are considering that this week. So the road ahead, the foundation continues to do what it does well, and that is convene the community and enable collective action, collective outcomes amongst colleges and universities and our commercial affiliates. Uh, projects, uh, as we've said in the beginning, there's three levels of decisions here, and I want to just say them again. The foundation has looked at the strategic view for the community, and we have taken the decision that creating Kowalico and engagement with Kowalico is the best thing to fulfill our mission for the second decade for colleges and universities. Each project now, because they have aggregated their resources and they know their needs, they are making their decisions in what ways they want to engage with Kowalico and what ways they want to keep doing things uh, as they are. The software remains open source with licensing that uh, as a uh, documented skeptic, you can go back and read my Educause review piece on uh, of Birkenstocks and wingtips was the title of the piece, um, about 2004 or five-ish. Uh, I argued for the style of licensing that Kowali has used over the last decade. I am now convinced, as the world has changed and evolved with cloud scale, that the style of licensing that we are using now provides greater risk mitigation to Indiana University and to your university or college than what we had used before. So I will write my mea culpa a rejoinder to my own article at the time uh, Teddy Diggs, who's the editor of Educause Review, uh, is ready to uh, accept it. Kowalico is gonna give us some scale and efficiency in things that we could not do when each project was running its own mini software company. And as the world increasingly moves to cloud scale, if Shelton Wagner was here, who runs NetPlus services for Internet2, he has graphs that just show it, the money in Silicon Valley and the adoption of off-premises services. And it's just growing like this. Why? Because it economically makes sense. One of the things that was very compelling to me, you heard my comment about the learning management system and a group that we've formed called Unison for digital education, not affiliated with Kowali, but ultimately choosing to go with Canvas. And even though Canvas is open source under AGPL3, our big consortium, we could go download that and stand it up and run it for Unison ourselves. But we were convinced that our money was better spent having Instructure host it, manage it, and they are rolling in software improvements every three weeks, continuously, every three weeks. Uh, you know, we do pretty well managing our local instance of our learning management system, but we're not upgrading it and making it better every three weeks. I think that's a pace that many places are going to find of great interest over time, 
And for those of us who choose to continue to host locally, we will have access to that code as it is, uh, as it is produced. So if we want to run locally and we want to implement every three weeks, we would have the option to do so as well. So with that, that is Kuali 101 as we go into our second decade. And we've got just a little bit of time. I'm very happy to take your question. If you will just say it loudly, I will repeat it for the audience. Okay, with that, we will take this as the gift of time, and I will stay down here. If anybody would like to come and chat afterwards, Jennifer Foudy, Executive Director for the Foundation, is here. Bruce, a uh, member of the Foundation Board, Bruce Alexander, is here, and maybe others that I can't see because of the spotlight. Thank you for coming. Enjoy your lunch and have an outstanding quality days. We'll see you at the Community Showcase tonight. Thank you. Thank you.